Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Deepthi and uh, today I wanted to specially come and talk about how to start your revision even before you know you haven't finished your subjects. Uh, you know, I've, get, I've been getting a lot of queries uh, about the revision strategy that the students should follow for upcoming NEET exams as well as for the November exams. And, uh, you know, I had talked about this in the recent YouTube live that we did on Dam's uh, YouTube channel. And I thought I would come and uh, explain it uh, elaborately on how exactly you can go in this strategy to, you know, start revising even before you've finished your subjects. Because, uh, you know, usually the students have a notion that a revision can be done only once you have completed your course. And uh, this is why, you know, you delay the revision to the uh, longest possible time and you plan it only close to the exams. And then what happens is the number of effective revisions uh, is not optimal. And we all know that with the kind of vast syllabus that we have, uh, if you're not able to revise something, then, uh, you know, it is very likely that you may not recall it in the exam as well, which is... Uh, defeating the purpose of why we started reading at all. So today I'm going to actually talk about uh, this revision strategy of mine uh, and I do feel that it is going to be very very effective. So let's see. So this is a strategy which is called as uh, the three column strategy. Now the three column strategy is a strategy which is going to tell you on how to start your revision after a grant test, right? So we have been repeatedly stressing on, uh, you know, that you should be giving grant tests uh, and continuously analyze the grant tests. So this is something which is very, very important. A lot of students get back to us. So some of them have not started the, doing the grant tests and they ask what is a good time to do it. And we would say now is the good time to absolutely do the grant test, okay? And there are other category of students who would actually give it give too many of grant tests as well. So, you know, their idea is to just simply go on giving the test. But you have to understand that the real purpose of giving a grant test is not simply completion of a test. Okay, the real purpose is to find out uh, or analyze what are your errors or mistakes or weak zones and once you identify what are your weak zones you know you know what to work on so that you build them up and you come out stronger in the subsequent tests the uh, yes there are a couple of people or students uh, you know who have time management issues as far as grantist is concerned and if you are in that category where time management is a problem for you then yes probably giving it frequently helps but other than that, you know, I wouldn't really recommend uh, giving grantists very, very frequently at this juncture of your preparation. Uh, what my suggestion is, and which is what we believe in, in dams as well, is that, uh, you know, uh, currently starting from uh, early on to now, which is mid-year, uh, it is a good idea to give the grantist once every three weeks right and gradually as you go further we will decrease the duration or between the two grant tests for example by august end you should uh, start giving the grant test every two weeks and then finally close to the exam you know um, let's say august september we give it once in two weeks and then from september onwards we start giving it uh, every week as well but if you're giving it right now every week then i actually believe that you're only finishing the grantess or you're just happy with the number of grantess you're giving but probably you're not analyzing now what is the idea of analysis so the uh, idea of analysis of the grantist is uh, you know not your percentile not your ranks uh, and not even your scores so what i want you to focus on is the number of correct questions in the grantist right our initial target is to push you towards the 200 landmark okay so try and reach 200 correct mcqs out of 300 and then once you reach 200 we will try and push it to 220 right the 200 landmark is a very very safe zone to be in the in in good ranks in neat exam where the number of students run in lags and once you reach close to 220 correct questions you would definitely be in the top 500 ranks right and uh, so this is 
the entire purpose of today's video which is to find out how to identify your weak zones how to do an analysis and you know uh, not get scared by giving the grantist and rather take it as a you know uh, i would say as an opportunity to find out what you're weak in and then work on those weak zones and keep building up your scores one by one so let's start with what is the three column strategy right now the three column strategy uh, is in essentially going to target your bottom three subjects in the grand test right what are the bottom three subjects the bottom three subjects are the ones where you have done maximum number of wrong questions i repeat your bottom three subjects are the ones in which you have done maximum number of wrong questions the first doubt that will come to the mind of a student is ma'am what if my bottom three subjects are those which i haven't read so far then i will say don't really worry about that part if the bottom three are the ones which you haven't read so far or haven't done in your classes then you go to the next three okay so among the ones among the subjects that you have done so far right find out your bottom three subjects where you have done maximum number of wrongs and let's say those subjects are x y z right they could be any and they're going to be variable for every person so now the first column of the three column strategy is listing out the sub topics which you have done wrong in your bottom three subjects okay so i repeat it is going to be a column where you are putting down a list of topics which you have done wrong i am not saying mcqs i don't want you to put down mcqs and their answers and their explanation okay so we don't want you to do that we want you to identify the topic that you have done wrong in the bottom three subjects so that is going to be your first column i want you to initially stick to only bottom three subjects otherwise you know if you if you do it for all the subjects right from the beginning the list is going to be overwhelming for you right and then you would be again stuck up and you would not know what to do right so first column is topics that you have done wrong in your bottom three subjects okay let's move on to the second column now the second column is going to enumerate again topics and not mcqs okay it is going to enumerate the topics which you've done wrong because they are volatile for you right no matter how many times you read it you do tend to forget these things uh, this could be something related to investigation of choice something related to value based questions something related to period of gestation you know things that need a a repeated uh, learning process so this is going to be different for every student you understand this this three column strategy is a personalized listing so that you know you don't really have to ask anyone on what you should study to bring up your scores and this list is definitely personalized and that's why it ensures that it is going to improve your scores okay i'm going to tell you what you're going to do with the list in just a moment the third column is going to be a column where you're going to put down a list of topics it again from the bottom three subjects which you did not know suppose you come across an mcq which you haven't really read or probably was not there in your notes or content then what do you do you make a list of that as well so these are your three columns right the topics that you have done wrong in the bottom three subjects the second one is the topics that are volatile for you in the bottom three subjects and the third one is going to be the topics that seemed new to you in the bottom three subjects now you've given one grand test and you've done with one analysis and you have list of these topics in three subjects do you realize that so you have three sheets now one for subject x one for subject y and one for subject z right now comes the key thing what are you going to do with these lists okay now as i said you know uh you are going to uh and and yes this cycle we will repeat in every grand test i'll tell you what to do between the two grand tests now now that you have made your list and you are going to give the next grand test after a span of 3 weeks what are you going to do in these 3 weeks this is what i am saying that you are going to start a passive revision now itself 
okay so week one let's say i'm going to dedicate to subject x week two we will dedicate for subject y and week three we are going to dedicate for subject z now what am i supposed to do in week one for subject x no i'm not telling you to start reading that subject all over again no we are not going to disturb your ongoing active schedule whatever you were doing in your week you have to continue doing that but i am going to add subject x in your passive revision now how every day of the week one every day and this is the determination that i need from you okay so you have to promise you will do it so every day in week one we will spend one or a maximum of two hours okay i'm just asking this little time from your schedule right one or two hours every single day of week one to revise subject x now if we had not made the list your first query to me would be ma'am how can i revise a subject in one hour it is it is not possible the subject is so big so this is where your list is going to be useful since i believe you cannot read a subject in one hour definitely you can't but can you read just one topic in one hour yes so this is what we're going to do so now i'm going to open the list for subject x start with these topics and revise at least one or two such topics every single day of week one we are going to repeat this protocol for subject y in week two and then we will repeat the protocol for subject Z in week three, right? I hope I have made it clear. So bottom three subjects, we have the list. We divided week one, week two, week three, and then we're going to revise these subjects just for one or two hours. And we're not going to revise the, every, the entire subject. We will revise only one or two topics. Which are those topics going to be? A, the ones that you've done wrong, so column one you know b the ones which are volatile for you the column two and three the ones that were new to you that is column three so this way if you realize what is going to happen this way you are passively revising these subjects right now itself you don't have to wait to finish that subject okay so you start revising it and what would you be re revising do you understand that you are revising things that you are either weak in or things that have very very high probability of being asked or things that are volatile and this is what is going to push you up the ladder okay so if you want success you have to work on these weak zones and as i said it is a personalized list so stop asking people what you should revise okay once you follow this believe me you will know what to revise and your scores will start improving now comes the other doubt now as i said you are going to repeat this cycle every gt so let's say three weeks have passed you're giving another gt now and i'm sure your scores are going to improve do write back to me as well whether they've improved or not okay but now the student is going to send me another message in telegram right because i stay connected on telegram where i'm helping students with strategy and planning and now they send me a message saying ma'am I have improved in the previous three subjects, but I'm sad because some other have become bottom three. And I tell them this is good. This is the entire purpose of the three column strategy. Now, once you work on your three subjects, they become strong, right? And they will no longer be bottom three, but some others will become bottom three. So what will happen now? Now for next three weeks, you will start passively revising some other three subjects. So it is going to be a rotation where all 19 subjects would eventually be covered. Yes. And what you are spending your time on is essentially the most high yielding things that you should be doing. So not only are you doing revision, you are doing what we call as effective revision, right? Revision of things that have high probability. Okay. Now also remember, as I said, this cycle has to be repeated every GT. So don't do it for just one GT because then the cyclical pattern is going to lose. So you follow it up with every GT and your subjects are going to, you know, you will put them in a cycle of revision. Not only this, I want you to do another little thing with my three column strategy. And this is as and when you start doing these subjects, you know, these topics from these subjects, 
I want you to start putting a cross on the topic that you have revised. And believe me, suppose, you know, let's say you were weak at, at what POG, what things are seen on an ultrasound scan in early pregnancy. Now, once you have revised that and you cut it out, you know, it will give you a, power, a feeling of empowerment. It will, it will uh, give you this confidence that, okay, now I'm thorough with this. Let it come in the exam and I'm going to beat it out. Right? So this is what I want you to feel. I want you to feel empowered after the test, not sad after a test. Please real, real, realize that these grand tests, the mock tests that we do, uh, you know, you shouldn't say that we get depressed by seeing their results. It should give you the new energy that, okay, now I know what I have to work on. And you will work on because you're all hardworking people. All you need is a little direction. So if you stick on to this direction, you will reach your goal with success, right? So please cut out the topics and uh, as and when you revise them. So you know what is going to happen? The list will also keep getting shorter. Let's say in the first go, you know, your physiology turned out to be weak. It was in the bottom three and there were six topics in the weak ones and two in the volatile one and two in the new one. Now you have cut it out. Next time, if, if you know, suppose you're doing something wrong in physiology, you know, these topics would have been covered and they would have been strengthened. So the list keeps getting shorter. And what happens is the time you take for revision will also become shorter, which is the entire purpose of revision. See, revision data does not mean that you have to revise the entire thing all over again. Every successive revision has to take shorter time than the previous one, which will only happen when you know what to revise, right? So these are the three effective lists of topics that you have for yourself that you are going to personalize. And I want you to stick this list on the first page of your notes copy. Let me tell you why. So once you stick this list on the first page of your copy, whenever you want to revise that subject henceforth, go through this list. And this is where you have to start your revision. You know, it is not that you have to start your revision from the first page, first paragraph, first line. No, then you will do it exactly the way you did it in the first go and you will not see a change. So if you really want to see a change, you have to do something different. So start from these areas, the weak zones, the volatile ones, and something that you found new, which needs reinforcement. So I want you to follow this three column strategy and, and do write back to me as well, right? Whether your scores are improving or not, we'll keep a track on your GT scores. I want to see the ladder going up. I want to see that you reach the 200 mark first, set that as a target. And then we will gradually push it to 220. This will also help students who reach a plateau. I do get a lot of messages which say, I'm stuck at 170, ma'am. I, I don't seem to move from there. And that's because they have, by putting their own mind into it, they have actually done whatever they felt they needed to do. But what they're not trying to find out is where they're lacking. And it's a defense mechanism. You know, if we have to study, we always want to study something that we like, that we are strong in. And we keep, you know, leaving the subjects that, that that are probably volatile, need a lot of intensive work. So, you know, it's it's a natural defense mechanism. So don't get bothered. So once you start finding out uh, what really needs reinforcement, you will surely improve. So I hope uh, I, I have elaborately told you how to go about this three column strategy. Uh, you know, uh, do write back to me about your feedbacks. If, if you want to know some more details, if you want me to keep a track on your targets, I'll be happy to do that and uh, you can send me a message on Telegram and I'm sure, uh, you know, that's what we say at Dams, that together we will win. So you put your efforts because you're the ones who are hardworking enough. You have a lot of potential. We show you the direction and when we, when we meet, we make the journey much more easier. So lots of good wishes uh, from me and from the entire Dams family. Lots of love. Thank you so much for listening out.